Oops, I double clicked on it. Hey, Ronnie, good evening. Hey, Phil. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I can't believe this is why. Can you? Uh, yeah, all I have to do is go outside with this long sleeve shirt on, and I know it's July because I'm way overdressed. I know, I know. It's it's been it's been hot. It's a little bit cooler today, so you know, if you was outside today, it wasn't quite as bad as it has been. But yeah, it is hot out there for sure. But, but we've gotten uh, some rain, and my weeds are growing again. Do you like summer? Being from Texas, I much more. I think about. You know, and I was born, you know, I won't say this too often. I was born up in the north and I moved to Texas when I was two and a half. Um, I like the heat. I'd much prefer um, being too hot than being too cold. Yeah, I, I always look forward to summertime, but then I always look forward to it being over and, and getting a little bit cooler, too. So, you know, we're, we're about halfway through, I believe, about halfway through the summer. And, and being not from around here, I guarantee you do not understand the blessings of having actually having four seasons. You know, Texas, it goes from blistering hot to blistering cold. Right. We have most years we have yeah. a solid four seasons. Yeah, you know, we do. And, uh, it's 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 even if I had married a Carolina girl, I don't think I'd be rushing back to move back to Texas anytime soon. It's it's you know, I went to summer camp out at a Y camp on a lake in Texas where it was 103 every day. I don't think at 61 years old, I'm going to be able to enjoy that too much anymore. <laughs> I, understand. I understand. Well, a lot of things have been happening in town, even though it's been a little bit hot, things have been going on. There's some things happening at the chamber, is it not? We have a full schedule once again. Let me pop it up here uh, at the stage. There we go. Um, so on our calendar coming up July 23rd, uh, we've got a lunch and learn. Trish Bass. Oh, my gosh. This lady is, if you are running a business in Rollsville or in the surrounding areas and you want to figure out how to get more impact from your social media, whether it's Google or Facebook, LinkedIn, next door, Trish is your woman. She is the person to go to that can advise a business owner on the right play, where to put your resources, where to put your time. We're having a luncheon with her, a lunch and learn with her at the chamber. Uh, July 23rd at noon. It's a lunch and learn. I definitely encourage you to come listen to what she has to say. And, and there'll be a small enough crowd of 10 to 12 people. We're going to actually get into one on one discussions and actually, you know, give, give you individualized advice for that event. Coming up after that, uh, July 25th. Oh my gosh. We've had some fun business after hours, but the best one of the year is always a Granite Falls because. Right. It's at the pool, and guess what? The pool has a bar. So bring your swimsuit. Don't bring your swimsuit. The bar, the I think the pool closes at uh, seven o'clock. So if you want to get thrown in the water, you can. But I was just there for their Friday night event um, for the fourth. A lot of fun. Uh, yeah. They had live bands, yeah. live music. We're having our, our June or our July after hours there. Come on out and, and do a little business to business networking with us. We'd love to have you. Yes, a lot of food, uh, too, there, I think. They do a good job. Yes, absolutely. Uh, between the bar and, the, and the, the kitchen they've got going on, good stuff. They had grill. They had people out grilling burgers and dogs when I was there. Cool. So that was good. Uh, the chamber has reestablished their monthly uh, morning coffees. So every, uh, one Tuesday every month from 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, typically the second Tuesday of the month, uh, it really depends. We we, we ho a business hosts it. We don't charge any money to have the business host it. It's going to be a business member, a member of the chamber. This month coming up, we've got Gwen Bailey with uh, Business Insurance Group. Gwen's going to talk about you know insurance concerns for small business, give you some tips and pointers. But you know, if you would like to host a morning grind in the next year, let us know. We'd love to to help promote a local business and and get your name out there and help you get some exposure to some new clients out there. But mm -hmm. um, August 13th, please come on out for that. And then the golf tournament's coming back. We're, uh, we did it last year. We're going to do it this year. Anytime Fitness has jumped in, in as our presenting sponsor, our top-level sponsor, backed up by our local uh, storage facility, Storage Max, and a few other hole sponsors. They're grabbing a hole. They're going to have a, a, a tent or a table set up at their hole, and they're going to have some tchotchkes to hand out some gimme, some little takeaways. You can fill up your shopping bag, throw it in the back of your cart, play on through 18 holes, 
the Hawthorns and Teva benchmark Rob Ordekin home inspections. We're, we're getting more sponsors every day. Please come out for that golf tournament. We'd love to have more players. Uh, so it's the uh, sign up is live on the Chamber website. You can go in and sign up for sp- more sponsorships or just sign up as a team player. Sign up a team or an individual player. Biggest event of the year for the Chamber. We haven't done it in a couple of years. Barbecue and Bands come back this September. It'll be from 1 to 6 in the afternoon, uh, September 28th. We're going to have probably three or four local bands, local being local to Wake County, Franklin County. Uh, We're going to have probably 15 or 20 chefs cooking some good barbecue. It's going to be a little bit of pork, a little bit of beef, some ribs, some brisket. There's going to be a variety of different meats out there. You can uh, put some money out and get some samples of their highly highly uh, well-spiced meat. We'll also have food trucks because we don't want to have the cooks that have to feed 3,500 people. It's going to be right there at the city park behind, in the back end of the city park, right behind Sanford Elementary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice little amphitheater there. Um, if uh, you know, come early, parking might be a small issue. We're probably going to be transporting people in with uh, a sponsored transport coming in from uh, parking at Thales. So parking will be interesting this year, but we're we're looking forward to bringing this event back to Rollsville. I think the town has a lot of fun with it. The residents have a lot of fun with it. The business owners have a lot of fun with it. And uh, so definitely come out for that. And I believe that is what we've got to wrap up our events for July and, and the rest of the year. We'll have more information for more after hours, more morning grinds as we get hosts and get those established. But that's what's going on in the chamber in Rollsville at this point. What's going on with the town? That's a, that's a lot going on. You know, the, the biggest thing we had was the fireworks show a couple of days ago, I guess, last week. And I talked to June a little bit about that when we come on. And I, I think you was out of town. You wasn't able to, to see that, were you? I believe, Philip, um, you missed the fourth celebration, right? I was. I did watch the fireworks, and uh, we snuck in. Uh, I've got some family uh, health issues going on, supporting one of my in-laws. And uh, so I couldn't make it to the uh, the town event down with, with the crowd. Mm-hmm. We did sneak in at about 8.45. I, I jumped into the parking lot of the firehouse and uh, joined the fire firehouse families. We watched the fireworks from the front from the firehouse. And it was the uh, first time I'd seen big fireworks in about five years. So I really thoroughly enjoyed that. Good job. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. And they had a band, a Ray band. Uh, it's a band that's been around for a long, long time. Now, I don't ever recall seeing them before. I may have, but I don't recall seeing them before. But they did a really good job, a good, uh, diverse um, 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 music, a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, types, beach music, you know, R&B, everything. So they did a really good job. I think everybody enjoyed it. And uh, I always, uh, always get good feedback on the, the fireworks show itself. Uh, uh, you know, I'm biased. I, I, I mentioned, you know, off, off the cuff, I'm biased. But, um, you know, I, I hear from some people that come that should not be biased. They're not from here. They always give me a good review and says one of the best shows that they've seen. Did you enjoy it, Philip? I loved it. And, uh, you know, I, I had a one of our four sons was actually down at the Raleigh fireworks show. And he's a young man. He can stand the crowds. He can stand the uh, lines. I'm not. I'm not with that. I want to go to a, a, a smaller crowd, uh, easier to get into, easier to get out. And that was definitely what Roseville mm-hmm. was. Yeah. And the Raleigh show had some problems this year. I think I saw on the news. So you went down there. You may would have been, you know, not not as pleased with. They it. got a little wet. Got a little wet. A little lighting and lightning storm and that kind of thing. So a little, little trouble. Uh, but uh, we had a really good night. It was a little bit hot. Then it cooled off a little bit before the fireworks and uh, had a really good night. Um, I don't know how many people. It's hard to it's hard to guess how many people actually saw it. Cause you have people stopping on the bypass watching it, you know, as they come through town. And uh, and yeah, you know, it, people like to get on the bypass and uh, turn in on Young Street. And yeah. uh, both the Baptist churches parking lots were were filling up with people, and even. Uh, because it was set off on the towns, uh, the the farm the town zones there. Uh, I forget the name. Uh, what is that? How do you what do you how do you refer to that farm today? 
Uh, you tell me where, uh, yeah, it, it's we call it the complex. It's where our municipal complex is going. Municipal complex. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a bunch of people sitting. There was plenty of space there for people, you know, scooting in at the last minute setting up. Yeah. So there were, and I, and I talked to a couple of friends that, uh, you know, the, a lot of the construction is happening on the south end of town. There was a lot of open space for people to jump in and just pull the car off to the side and get out of the car, throw the camp chair out. Mm -hmm. So there were people enjoying it everywhere in the area. It was. And uh, and we'll get June on in a little while, and I'm going to try to nail him down on the number of people. But it's really hard to know the number because, as you say, they're all through town at the churches. I don't buy that. You snuck in. I don't think we counted you, uh, Philip. Uh but uh, I heard number of 10,000 people. Well, we'll see if we can't get uh, June to confirm, you know, just how many, how many we had. But it, it, was, a, it was a lot of people. So um, well, it's about the time. We're ready to bring him on if you yeah, want to bring we've got a couple of really good guests tonight, Philip. I'm excited to have them. Uh, this is uh, Parks and Recreation um, Month. Uh, we did a proclamation this week on that to, to, uh, to recognize the Park and Recreation Department. And we're going to talk about it a little bit. So um, I think the I think the first guest we got is is Paul I believe. Um, Let me bring him up. Yeah, bring Paul up. And um, oh, that's June. Hey, oh, June. sorry. Hey, June. We'll be back to you. <laughs> There's Paul. That looks like you fire the producer. Hey, Paul. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, you as well. Yeah. So. Uh, so Phil, appreciate it, and um, talk to Paul about twenty you minutes. You drop back in in a few minutes. Uh, uh, Paul, um, you are the Roseville Town Commissioner and liaison to the Parks and Recreation Department. Give us a little other bio, more more about you know who you are, you know how long you've been in town, and kind of what you do, the service you do to town. So I've been in town since twenty twelve. Um, wow. I have four kids, and uh, kind of my uh, into the parks and rec thing was actually, you know, moving into town, your kids automatically want to go to play sports and stuff. And, uh, you know, we had a uh, baseball here, softball, um, had some soccer and, uh, had, a, had our oldest that wanted to play soccer. And, um, it's always hard to find, uh, better or, um, volunteers. Uh, so they asked if I'd coach for, uh, their team and not know anything about soccer. I said, sure. Why not? We'll do it anyways. And uh, from then on, I think it was about eight or nine years I've been coaching either um, soccer. I tried baseball one year. Uh, I did basketball one year. Um, just trying to be in a little bit of everything. And mm -hmm. um, and that kind of that kind of worked into um, we there was a year where we didn't have fireworks in the Fourth of July, uh, 2014. And like you said, everybody knows Rosal for the Fourth of July uh, and our, our display of fireworks. So we, uh, there was a group of us that got together um, and actually put something together for 2015. Um, and in that group, we kind of uh, paired off a little bit from that 2016 uh, through 2018. Uh, my family actually started a, um, a nonprofit with the help of the town and uh, actually ran it uh, those years to just make sure we had something going for the town. And, um, and then the town wanted it back. I mean, it must've been that great that, you know, they, they wanted to keep it going. So, um, that was, that was the start of everything. And then from then on, I, uh, I ran for office and, uh, I am six years and X amount of months in, um, I've been on the parks and rec, uh, advisory board as our liaison, uh, for that entire time. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had a, a lot of things going on with uh, Parks and Rec. We uh, people don't realize people you just know, think of Parks and Rec as um, you know the, the sports. That's the biggest thing, the sports, and they they see the the, um, the parks we have. Uh, the parks we have are great. We have a uh, Main Street Park. Um, you know, it has playgrounds and such. And then we have um, the farm, which we actually just purchased uh, a while back. Uh, 116 acres of that, and maybe we can talk a little more about that in a few. Um, Millbridge Nature Park as well, um, just, you know, in its name, it's a nature park, uh, greenways and everything else connect us to everybody. Uh, and then we, you know, just all the other things that come along with uh, Parks and Rec. You know, we have um, programs, we have, um, you know, uh, 
different things we've added. Uh, we do we started Arbor Day. Um, we've been uh, on our, our USA uh, team or well, Tree USA uh, member for seven years. Um, and then when we started our Arbor Day celebration in the town, we would just plant one tree. We had a couple of people show up um, and it wasn't anything big. Um, this year, we actually gave away um, pollinator plants to everybody that wanted to come along. Um, we had events for the kids uh, in Main Street Park. And um, mm -hmm. so things like that, you know, we just we just started. We started little with everything and uh, kind of growing it from there. And it's it's been amazing to see over the years, how much we've actually grown everything with Parks and Rec. Yeah, and I think, uh, I think like you said, you was a coach, and then you, ever since you've been um, commissioner, you've been in Parks and Recreation uh, liaison, working directly with the Park uh, park and Recreation Director and also the the board that kind of um, do advisory board on that. Uh, yeah. It is your passion. It's something you enjoy doing. You you like, uh, you, you, feel, you, you feel the importance of uh, – of parks and recreation yeah definitely and, and i think that like i said parks and rec just isn't parks and you know just parks in general you know there's greenways we have 10 miles of greenway in rollsville um we've actually added um our newest thing is uh naturally rollsville we um it's a new um uh, thing we're working out where we are adding pollinator gardens to rollsville uh to add in bad back into the nature of everything um and we have a few slides we could show of that um we also um just this year or just this past year uh brought murals into the town um and there's a mural in that one as well as our um pollinator garden at uh, May, or uh, town hall right there and um just you know it's just all it's anything and everything um we just need to add add more things we have more you know we have events for everyone parks and recs for everyone Mm -hmm. um, not just for, you know, sports or anything else, but we have, you know, events like uh, we had our first Juneteenth this year. Uh, we had our Rolls of Fourth of July, obviously. Uh, and then we have Fall Fun Fest coming up. That's always a great draw uh, for everybody and has, you know, all kinds of things for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think uh, I think you hit on some of it. You know, we did a proclamation uh, Tuesday night. Um, you know, you, you actually read it. And one of the first sentences it says that uh, parks and recreation is an integral part of, of uh, of the communities, um, and and you feel that way that really uh, it, it's more than just like you said youth ball and that type of thing. It's 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 embedded as part of the community. Yep, definitely. Um, I know I know one of the things I think I, I mentioned it some you know back you know campaigning and stuff that we were uh, we were working on. Uh, our parks and recs vision, I guess you'd call it. And, you know, I think, I think at the time we talked about four things, you know, especially the use of sports programs, you know, that's, that's a big part of it. But we also, we also wanted to make sure that, you know, we have good activities. I mean, you mentioned a bunch of those activities that we got planned yeah. this fall coming up. So activities is a big thing. And, and then the two new things we were working on was culture and, um, and also history. Right. So, you know, I, I think, you know, with some of the artwork you're doing and stuff like that with the uh, murals and things like that, that's a little bit more in the culture side of it. And and then uh, naturally, you know, I think we're doing the uh, the museum, the, uh, the nature museums and stuff. Do you feel like we're, we're on track on some of these goals and visions we have for parks and recreation? From a yeah, I think we are. I, I think, and as you mentioned, the, the outdoor museum, uh, a, a, Big shout out to Derek for Stegan for that. Um, he helped us out a lot with that, but that is something new we're actually doing as well. Um, that ties into your culture, that ties into your history and everything else of your town. Um, that is gonna be, um, we have a station right now in Main Street Park um, that's going to kind of tells you a little bit about different spots, different locations in town, whether it be you know, history, um, geology, this, that, and everything else. If anything's happened in town, we're trying to put a, a marker there. Um, you don't want to lose that history. Um, you don't want to lose uh, what's unique about Rollsville. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, anybody could have a generic anything in their town, but if it's something that's very unique to Rollsville, we definitely want to point that out and uh, and, and go from there. So I think the our Parks and Rec Department is, is great um, at looking outside the box, trying to do new things, trying to add new things, and then trying to uh, expand to, to, to stuff we wouldn't even have thought of um, before. So I, I think they're doing a great job. They're expanding out to 
um, our senior population, mm -hmm. um, which is a great thing. You know, they hold events for them. They hold, uh, for example, like bingo events for them and stuff like that. Take them to um, down to the the, the mall, uh, to, you know, to have, so they get a little bit of time out and stuff like that. So that's that's what you're looking for. You're looking for a group that will really um, try to cover your entire community. Yeah, um, I think uh, you know we're going to talk with uh, with June a little bit about the staff side of it. The staff, you right, the staff works very hard and they do a really mm -hmm. good job and. You know, when we you hear what June talks about, you you know that for sure. But you know, you mentioned Derek Van Stegen and uh, and several you know um, others like him has done a lot in the park in the last. And you as a volunteer when you before you came on the board, but it really you know from uh, from a community standpoint, it really is good to have community involvement and it's opportunities of people in the community to get involved. And not only if you don't really like kids sports, or if you're older like like I am. You don't have to do that. It's other things you can get involved in, right? And we, we do you encourage uh, you encourage citizens to get involved in our programs? Yeah, definitely. And we actually, you know, um, so we we had the pollinator gardens that were just shown there. Um, that was actually uh, the Rollsville High School FFA actually helped us put in one of those. Uh, so that's one of those ties where you try to do you know you get to the youth. Um, we've had another group that came out, uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, that actually helped us clean up. Um, after the first year of our pollinator garden in the front of Main Street or Town Hall. Um, and then we have other groups that will come out. Uh, we have uh, blood drives so well that they hold they hold um, every other month and uh, and litter sweeps. I mean, you know, anybody can do a litter sweep. So stuff like that, um, there's, there's something for everyone. And if there isn't, uh, definitely let us know. Uh, if you have an idea or anything else, you know, let the Parks and Rec know. Um, and they, they would, they're, very good about um, trying to tie everybody in. Yeah, and and um, I, I think I think you know, like even the military banners. I mean, that was sort of branched out of the uh, parks earlier, earlier, didn't it? I think. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I brought it, brought that before the board, um, and they were uh, great at putting together. We, you know, they found me a, a source uh, to make those banners, and. Um, Helped with initially getting that all started, so that, that was great. Yeah. Um, so, what do you you know you you've been uh, you've been commissioner, been uh, parks recreation liaison. What, what is your biggest things that you're proud of? Your accomplishments you most uh, most proud of in uh, last five years, five and a half years? <laughs> I think the pollinator gardens is the biggest thing. I think that's something that you don't see every day. I mean, you don't hear about it. it it's something that that's added to nature. I think between that and um, the growth of our Arbor Day, I think were the, the two biggest things I'd like to, the most accomplishments, you know, I'd uh -huh. like to talk about. I think those are, I think those are really the biggest ones on my mind. I think those two things and, you know, um, the military banner thing is, is a great thing too. Like you said, that, that came out of the, the parks and rec initially and stuff like that. Um, that's still that's that's a great part of our community. Um, we you know we salute them for their service. Um, mm -hmm. But just it's just I don't know it's it's been a whirlwind, but it's been quick. Um, I'm just looking forward now to we're getting to the next stages of the uh, the farm uh, out of the bypass, and um, we actually have the entrance of that farm out on uh, out to bid right now. So we are looking to uh, hopefully get that uh, going out there. Um, we put some money together, hopefully for the next couple budgets to actually start expanding that out there. And um, and again, you know, to the the staff and and everybody we have at Town Hall, you know, they they're looking for ways to maybe we can't bring everything all at once, but we need to bring we're gonna bring pieces and parts to make the most sense first, and then um, that way we can activate that that area out there and get it going. Yeah, I think if I recall, we got. Um... Twelve million dollars in the next four-year budget, in our you know short-term budget for the next four years to yep. start implementing programs out there, and we're not really sure what we're going to do, are we? Right now, we're not right now. Yeah, we're 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 floating around a couple ideas, but we're uh, we we want to you know you need the biggest bang for your buck right when you start off just to make sure you know it's it's something that um that that makes sense that that helps out the community um. And uh, and there'll be once that's all done, it'll be something for everyone. Mm 
Mm -hmm. um, it's just a matter of bringing in the phases, you know, and how yep. we're going to do that. Yeah, I think uh, I think it's 106 acre, 116 acres. 116. Think, yeah, that's right. And yep. if I recall, the price tag a year ago, two, a year and a half ago, was like a $32 million. It's probably yeah. $40 million before we get it filled. Right. <laughs> it's a really nice park if you think about all the amenities that goes in it. Describe it real quick. If you if you if it completely build it out, what would it look like? Uh, I think it's got four ball fields on it. Um, two of them are, I think, uh, multi-use. Uh, we also have there's a, actually a farmhouse out there. Um, we're looking to do kind of uh, agritourism uh, section in the middle of that. Uh, so you have an educational spot there. Uh, there's also um, an all-inclusive uh, playground out there. Uh, dog parks. Uh, I think there was a spot for um, actually like soccer fields and stuff like that too. Once we get further along, but um, and then an event center um, and then an amphitheater as well. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to go out there. Um, we just it's just a matter of you know getting it all together and getting it all lined up and, and making it happen. Yeah, and if I recall, um, it's got a really nice pond. I don't know if we can yeah. put that to a use somehow, fishing or something like that. And, yeah. A really nice area behind the pond that can be like you said um could be a garden or something right um, right need to garden or something like that you know because it is kind of was a farm um was farm property there and then we got a little bit of area that we hadn't defined exactly what what it would be um so um it's pretty excited so i think uh I think probably twelve million dollars may get a third of it. Is that what you think? <laughs> of I hope. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If everything is getting very, very expensive. Right. Um, so, um, so if, if you moved to town, uh, just moved here from, let's say, New Jersey, what would you tell somebody moving here about the Parks and Recreation Department here? Uh, we have anything and everything they would want. Um, we're adding more every day. Um, and I would even add, I would give any example. Um, we actually had people um, show up to Main Street Park, which, you know, um, it's a it's a jewel. It's in the middle of town, everything else, everybody knows it. Uh, we have people who actually come from out of town that were just kind of visiting the area when we were having an Arbor Day event. And we were talking to them and they said their son was looking for a you know place to stay. It was kind of between Roseville, Wake Forest and kind of surrounding areas. And we kind of told them, you know, what we have, what we offer what's coming you know, down the line. And um, they they made a one or two laps around there and they came back and said they were gonna really recommend Rollsville to their son to actually move to because um, of everything we kind of offered. Um, you know, we have the, the farm right now that we were just talking about. We actually have uh, Millbridge Nature Park. Uh, we actually just put a grant in for that, a uh, request for a grant. And I believe we're gonna get that. Um, we're gonna renovate that. And that's, that's an amphitheater we have down in there. Uh, we're going to renovate it. It's going to be ADA accessible. Um, we're really going to step it up out there so we can have events out there as well, too. So we have a lot of stuff that are actually, that's actually going on in town right now. And I think we're renovating Main Street Park, too, if I recall. Yes, yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Some money in the budget. That's going to be pretty quick, I guess, this year. Yeah. Uh, four and five. Yeah, we're actually going to, we're going to, um, there's, there's a lot of things that can go with that park, but one of the main one is uh, we're going to put like a, a permanent rubber uh, mulch down for um, our playgrounds area to make it safer. And you don't have the mulch uh, sliding down, you know, so much anything else. It'll be a lot more of a permanent setup. So what do you hear that we don't have? I mean, if you're thinking about the future, future parks plans and stuff, what do you hear citizens says, you know, they want that we don't have in our parks right now? Uh, I think the big one right now is going to be pickleball. Uh, I think everybody's talking about that. I think, but I think, you know, that's, that's how you, you uh, work with your, your parks and rec group. And that's how you, um, you pivot to what people want and need. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't have the farm completely built out yet. So maybe we need to pivot on a certain phase of that to incorporate that in there. If that's a long-term uh, thing that everybody's looking for. Um, people are in, you know, people are also just, I think in general, you know, people love where they live here. I think they just want to make sure they have park uh, area to actually go to. So we kind of work with that too on the, the town board to uh, kind of work with our developers and, and see if, you know, they might have some land when they're developing that they can kind of maybe set aside or, or you know, offer to the town for, for future parks. Uh, so we're not going out there and trying to um, get land when it's not there anymore. 
So we're trying right. to work ahead with that too. Right. You, you have to plan ahead. You have to really, right. you know, you really have to plan ahead and, and, uh, and, and bank, I call it banking property. If you're going to build something in the future, and it's still a few pieces that, you know, probably be good places to have a park or, right. or you know, something like that. But, uh, but 20 minutes go by fast, Paul. So <laughs> it does. <laughs> I'm going to bring June on. Anything closing, anything you want to, you know, leave this, the uh, citizens with uh, before you go? Uh, just remember to, to take care of nature around you. And like I said, if there is something out there, parks and rec related, that, you know, you are not seeing right now, please make sure you let us know. Um, that's why we're here. That's why we, uh, we're we a big community. We want to make sure everybody gets um to enjoy our community uh, and you'll have June on. So he will be the one taking all the heat for that, but make sure they contact June to tell him what they would like to see around our town. Yep. And I think the artwork that, uh, you know, we've done in the last year or so has been really great. And yep. it looks, it looks good. It's a good, uh, it's a good uh, overall team effort by everybody. You Paul, you've done a great job. A lot of citizens. Uh, I hate to I hate to name one because you have to name so many. Yeah, I know. There's there's a lot. We already mentioned Derek and Derek. You know, worked with Parks. I don't know how many years. Him and Terry, yeah. great job. And that's what it takes. It. You know, you got June and his staff, and and we're going to talk about it in a minute. But he can use always use volunteers. <laughs> exactly. He can always <laughs> use volunteers. And anybody out there that wanted to be like Paul and volunteer and <laughs> and uh, and kind of help out with some things, um, just let us know. We appreciate it. He <laughs> said, come on. Thanks, Paul. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, there's June. How you doing? Hey, Mayor. How are you? I guess I'm doing good. I guess your ears was itching and burning from what we were talking <laughs> about there. I mean, yeah, probably, it was a little bit. Probably you had to sit on your, your hands to keep from jumping in because I'm sure you wanted <laughs> to jump in some few things. So um, Go ahead and introduce yourself. I know we had you on the show um, about a month ago, but go ahead and introduce yourself again. I know you from uh, from Franklin County up in the Lewisburg area. Mm -hmm. um, hope hope uh, hope you enjoy being a little bit more south now than uh, than Lewisburg. But just tell us a little bit about Jim Green and and how you got here and what what do you what's it been like so far? Okay, my name is June Green. I'm the Roseville Parks and Recreation Director. Um, I started last August. So I'm pushing up uh, almost a year. Um, I came from uh, Franklin County Parks and Recreation was where I was the director for 17 years. Um, born and raised in Lewisburg. Um, I was the youngest of them six. You know, I was that old, old child mayor. You know, my, my right. oldest is uh, my oldest sibling is 17 years older than me. So, you know, it, it was it was that big gap there. So I'm the youngest. Um, I have a um, daughter, um, and um, she just gave me uh, my actually first, I call him um, my first son, <laughs> since, since I only had one, one girl. So I, I got a, um, I got a grandson. His name is Creelan. He's about two months old now. So th th that's been exciting this last two months. Um, but being here for a year, um, I've kind of sat back and kind of see how things were ran in the past and um, try to emulate as much as I could of, of what, what was working and, and what, what the citizen liked. And now we're at a, at a stage of uh, tweaking some things here and there, but for the overall, um, Rosa Parks and Recreation has, has been a thriving from way back. I've actually I'm umpired um, World Series All-Star Games here in the town of Rosa before for Dixie Youth Baseball back in the day. So. I actually know what actually Roseville a Athletics and Parks and Rec, you know, what it was like back in the day. So I'm just trying to make sure I can bring it back and, and keep it moving forward. Yeah. Paul, Paul and I, um, and you do a great job. We, you've been really, uh, you've been really excited having you, June. You bring excitement to the group. I think uh, some things you do and we're, we're, we're excited um, of the last 11 months almost now. Mm -hmm. Excited to have you. Um, you know, we, we read the proclamation, uh, entered the proclamation. This, you know, while we have the show tonight has to do with uh, Parks and Recreation Month. Mm -hmm. And um, and one of the one of the whereas, you know, these things got whereas is all over. 
And one of the whereas, you know, talks about increased property values, expand, expansion of local tax base, increased tourism, uh, attractions and retention of businesses and crime, crime reduction. Yes. You believe all that? Yes, it does. Um, like I said, crime, when they talk about crime, a lot of times because they say if you have idle time on your hands, a whole lot of time, that's when you get into trouble. So by providing um, recreation and activities, not just for youth or adults as well, it gives them opportunity to go out and not sit around with nothing to do, think about bad things to do. Also, it gives them a chance to um, blow off some of that uh, stress that they have. Mm -hmm. Like with our line dancing classes, dance classes for adults, um, bingo of theirs or whatever, it gives them a chance to relieve some of that stress so that so that they don't have it built up in them where it, it may lead to violence at home or so forth. So, um, and like you say, increasing the value of, of your land and stuff. I mean, parks, um, building a, a home, if you have a home and then a park comes near it, the value of your home is going to go up tremendously just because the accessibility for recreation is so close to your home. Mm -hmm. So uh, the biggest thing that a lot of people noticed that it was, was doing COVID. They noticed that during COVID, um, the open space and being outdoors was very important for people to be able to space themselves and mm -hmm. still be able to get out. So um, I, I hate to say, it, you know, COVID brought along some things, but COVID kind of put a big spotlight on parks and recreation and showed people how important it is to have parks and open space. Yeah, I think I think during COVID, it was it very much demonstrated how it connects with mental health. And, you know, people getting shut in at the house and, you know, isolated. You know, you talked about something, nothing to do. And isolation comes with that and stuff. Uh, it, it really does. You know, just walking out in the park or going out there, sitting on the park bench or something and just just make just seeing the sunlight just makes mm -hmm. you know, a tremendous amount, trem tremendous amount of difference. One of the things uh, I'm, it, it mentions in this proclamation that made me think uh, when we were reading it all night, um, June has to do with tourism. I don't think we're there yet, but we're talking about getting there. Is that right? Yes, we are looking to get there. Um, even with at our Millbridge Nature Park right now, um, the tourism that uh, we had our Juneteenth event, and we also have um, music at Millbridge. Those events that bring in um, different artists to perform, and people are coming from out of town to actually see these artists perform because some of the artists has a following. So they're bringing people in, people are wanting to come to see them. And so when they come that they're going to want somewhere to eat mm -hmm. and they're going to um, spend their money here in Rosewood. And as we get bigger, especially with, with the farm start to progress, we really going to really look to bring in other um, increase their tourism, even if it's anything from ball fields, um, uh, we, even with the ball fields that we're talking about bringing in, that may be able to uh, we can host tournaments. So that's going to bring people in. Um, and some of the open space that we have out there at the farm, we can even throw in uh, this golf course, something that's very low maintenance that people will travel. Surprisingly, I, I didn't know it was that popular as well. People will travel hour, hour, 15 minutes just to play disc golf on a brand new course. So the tourism is going to be coming. Um, once we build this um, connectivity with our greenways all through cobblestone and so forth with those uh, businesses and stuff there, people are going to come down, want, want to go to those businesses. They, they're going to end up walking through the town and it, people are going to want to start coming to Roseville mm -hmm. because it's, it's going to be that um, that hometown feeling in a, in, in a growing city. So the tourism is, is, is going to spark. We start having more events. Um, when the Juneteenth event, our first year doing it this year, um, we had close to 100 some people there. Um, next year, I, I see it being more. Uh, people are already asking about being vendors. Other artists are, have already approached me about wanting to be an artist at the event. So um, I see it really growing. And right here on 401, um, with the four lanes, people are, are, are going to come to us. Yeah, exactly right. I don't know if you saw it, uh, June, but Terry Simmons, um, Thorn Rose, 
Yes. Uh, they she she popped up that August the fourth. Um, there will be uh, an event for school supplies, kids going back to school in August. Yes. And you know, I think I think you're partnering with her on doing that. Uh, one of the things I've seen since you've been on board, June, and maybe um, it, it seemed like it, it seemed like you put an extra effort or bigger effort on partnering with, you know, nonprofits, uh, working with churches, all sorts of other organizations. Even even I, I tell you, tremendous amount of work I've seen in the last twelve months has to do with the senior network, the nonprofit senior network with senior citizens and stuff. It appeared that you really put in an effort on connecting the parks with nonprofits and other organizations to, to, to bring a bigger product to the community, more or less. Is that yeah, fair to say? Yeah, because um, to me, Mayor, um, when you're in a community, it, it needs to be community-based. And so that means that the more that we get involved with the community, the more the community feel um, more susceptible to be a part of Parks and Rec. They mm -hmm. will be uh, more involved to participate into our programs because all these businesses and organizations are staples in, in Roseville. So the more we do with them, the more we will build that relationship and, and, it, and it'll make Parks and Rec and the whole town more community based where everybody will feel in, uh, inclusive to be to be able to go to this event or go to that event because they know that it is a community event, and then the town is a one. Is it just one big community now? That's just great. That's great. Um, so, what it when you're talking about that and community stuff? What do you see as June's Green's goals? Do you have any goals? I know you mentioned something one time about more adult recreation and stuff. What, um, it, what do you see? What do you see? What you want to personally accomplish? You know, as being uh, parks director here in Rogues Hill. Um, I, I want to get more, more inclusive and diverse, Mayor. Um, I want us to do not only touch. So right now we only do athletics just for youth. I, I want us to do um, adults. I would love for us to be, have more of our seniors participating in the senior games as well here in Roseville. Um, I, I know that they are those senior games for Wake County or in other towns. But I, I want us to be more than just youth um, athletics, even when it comes to our culture events. I want our culture events to be truly diverse culture events. Um, like this year, we just started Juneteenth. So um, that was a big step in that direction where we now we do have another culture event where um, we are looking at to maybe to maybe do another event where it's a multicultural event. Um, so I'm looking at doing that. Um, I'm looking at doing, um, also diversify with our population. Um, so we can do that special needs population. I want to get more involved with, with the special needs, um, uh, special Olympics, um, having special needs dance. That's one of the things I want to do, um, because that's one of my passions also. And like with, with the senior organization, um, um, I've actually put it upon all, all of our coordinators and say, hey, I want this department to be diverse. Mm -hmm. And all of our coordinators now have jumped on. Um, I, I have a great staff. Um, like, I, like I say, I'm just up here to one speaking, but I need to have a whole hour just to, just to talk about my staff by themselves. Oh, yeah. They do a great job. Um, so my staff had jumped in and did their trying to do um, diverse um, programming, um, Miss Tina White, she's over our cultural, um, coordinator. She has, uh, jumped in with the senior network. They have their own little group that meet once a month to come up with activities that they have set for them. And, um, within the last year, she has been set up for this coming year that they're going state fair, um, Chinese lighting, some kind of a sugar event. Um, they're going to the ca um, casino. They're doing trips for just the seniors. And, um, you know, when she told me about the, the, the event for the sweets, the sweet food or something, kind of uh, sweet dairy bakery or something, I actually told her that if she needs somebody to a chaperone with her for that one, I would actually volunteer to go with that one with her. 
with the seniors. But um, right now, my thing is, I want this thing to be diverse and inclusion for the town. That's that's my real biggest push. So that's why I've been out talking to the churches, talking to the schools, talking to all these special groups and organizations within the town, so that I, I could I could build me a a team up within the community that that we can pull up all these events. Yeah, and, and like you said, it's for everybody, and that that takes some thought, really. For everybody, because, you know, you mentioned special needs uh, kids and, you know, um, I think I mentioned it other night in the, in the board meeting. You know, I get we don't have a lot of special need playground equipment right now. You know, uh, really, for your special need kid, you don't, you know, you, you don't have a lot of playground equipment to use. And, you know, that's one of the things I think what you're talking about, if we're going to be all inclusive and and for everybody, then. We probably need to think about that, don't we? Yes. Um, so here moving forward, we are really looking at um we we are really looking at I'm um, trying to um make sure that all of our playgrounds here moving forward, we we actually do take that into consideration. Um is that is that we do make it um ADA accessible, getting in and out, and when we do have some elements within that playground. That, that everybody can play together. For, for it to be inclusive, it doesn't mean have a little small section over to the side just for special needs. Right. No, it needs to be all together where, where they can actually interact and play with, um, I'm not going to say normal kids, but other kids. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. so so there's that big push. That's really, that's really good. Um, the uh, one, one of the things, you know, when talking about, uh, you know, diversity for all ages, I, I think uh, I have seen a lot of um, more effort on senior citizens. Uh, it looks like your, your group is uh, is spending more time with the senior network and those kind of organizations and senior expansion things. Um, you know, the, the, I think our community center now is open more for seniors. It was always been open for some, but it looks like to me it's even more now. Do you feel like it's a, it's a good emphasis, bigger emphasis on senior? senior um, yes, I, I think it is. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say they didn't do it in the past, but um, I think with the staff that we have now and, and so some of their background, it kind of made it a little easier. Like now, every Wednesday, every Wednesday – here in the community center from 10 to 11, we have some senior specific event. That's every Wednesday, um, something for the seniors here from 10 to 11 every Wednesday. So that right there has been huge, I, I think, as to so that the seniors know that at least once a week right now, they have somewhere where, where they can go. It may be bingo, it may be Blanco, it may be, um, uh, some kind of performing arts, uh, anything like that. So it's really been good. So this year we will be hosting our uh, senior golden, I want, I think it's Golden Age e Expo, and yeah, that's going to be on on November the twenty first. That's National Seniors Day. We're going to have an expo here in the community center where where everybody, where the seniors can come in, and we're going to have vendors set up. And what they'll do is they'll come in. We have vendors. We're gonna have speakers. Um, just different information for the seniors to come in. It may be from um, getting health screenings, um, know about uh, housing, uh, food banks, or anything like that that seniors may know about uh, banking, um, a lot of things. And somebody had told me that um, you actually gonna become giving a welcome that day, Mayor. Yeah, I can do that. I, I, I. I um... I would be more than happy to do that. Is it August the 21st or November? You said November 21st. I'm sorry. If I, if I, my, my bad. It's going to be August 21st. August 21st. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's, uh, that's that's coming up soon, really. Yeah, it's coming up real um, soon. Um, we are working hard now to to finalize everything with a, a, a meal, um, some form of snacks for all the seniors that come through. And also, that's going to also be the first day to register for all of our um, senior trips that's coming up for the months of September, October, November. So people who come to the expo, the seniors that come to the expo, that, that'll be a day that they can go to the uh, parks and recreation table 
and actually register for those events mm -hmm. because we are not opening up to um, on online registration or to the public till the 22nd. Mm -hmm. But on, if you come to the expo, you'll be able to sign up because all these events are going to be limited seating. So if you come to the event and want to go to these events, you can come and sign up on that day and um, and you can actually um, beat, beat the rest from, from getting in there. That's great. That's great. Well, let me ask you this, uh, June. Uh, we are running out of time. 20 minutes have gone by already. So uh, <laughs> we could use another 20 minutes for sure. I know, right? But, but I think I was talking to you. I think you told me uh, a while back that uh, there's about 700 uh, participants in the fall ball programs and the fall program soccer and everything. Um, that number may be somewhere along in there. Yep. But overall, it's, it's really – I guess I guess when I think about your group and your staff, your great staff you have, just how many different individuals do that group touch in some way? You know, because really, you touched ten thousand a few days ago. Is that right? <laughs> yes, yeah, surprisingly, I I have been doing fireworks for seven seventeen years before I got here, eighteen, and uh, this is the first time. I have uh, kind of seen what 10,000 looked like, but I was ripping and running so much I really couldn't get a chance to see it uh, until I got on the stage and, and looked out into the crowd. And wow, that was amazing. Um, but yes, with with everything we do here, we actually, Parks and Recreation touches every demographic here in the town of Roseville. Some way, fashion, or form, we are touching every demographics here. The only one that we haven't really focused in on and touched wholly has been that special need. So that, that that's my next biggest push is to make sure that we actually touch the special need uh, population because we, we have touched the, the youth, the adults, the seniors. Now I just want to make sure that uh, uh, the African American, the Native American, the Blacks, Hispanics, we, we, we're touching whites, we're touching all of that. But there's one little piece that we haven't touched on yet, and that's going to be that special needs um, population. So that's my next biggest thing is to make sure that we do touch that so that I can say that Parks Recreation here in Roseville is touching every demographics here in the town. That, that's good. It, it's just, it, to me, it's mind boggling, you know. I mean, if you count people use our greenways, there's no really number. Yeah. You know? <laughs> how do you how do you know how do you know what people are doing in our parks? I mean, uh, we don't even have uh, enough parking for everybody to come no. to Main Street. Sometimes, with uh, you know, with the people that want to come there. But I, I guess in 12 months, if you thought about it, how many different individuals it touched, is just probably mind-boggling. So. Yes. Great job. And, you know, Jim, just pass along to your folks, you know, great job. Um, they, they are a great bunch of, of people. I think they're very, uh, you know, I, I think it makes a difference when you do something you enjoy doing. I don't know if you agree with that or not, yes. but I always felt like, you know, if you do something you enjoy doing, and I hope all your people enjoy what they're doing and enjoy, you know, uh, providing, touching all these thousands and Ten thousands of people, you know, with the fireworks show and those type things. I really do. Yeah, I mean, we, that's a great job. But, Mayor, before I get off, I, I actually know my actually uh, uh, time is coming. By this being Parks and Recreation Month, I, I, I must um, give a big shout out to to my staff. Um, I got an Eddie Henderson. He's our uh, park superintendent. I got Kristen Stafford. She's our special events coordinator. I got Tina White. She's our cultural coordinator. I got um, Mark Pittman. I got Brett Garrett. They are our athletic coordinators. I got uh, Nada Stevens. She was our uh, administrative assistant. And as much as Parks and Rec does, and we got our own department, we would not be nothing without the public works department. So, during Parks and Recreation Month, I must shout out Public Works because they are the ones who are cutting out ball fields. They line them for us. Any kind of thing we have going on with our fields, they are there. They're moving stuff for special events for us. So I must, even though it's Parks and Recreation Month, I must give a big shout out to Public Works as well. 
and uh, Isaac, Isaac and, and um, his whole department with public works. Yeah, I think they go hand in hand a little bit, you know, because, you know, you're using the facilities and they public, you know, facilities mm -hmm. and public works has to, has to do, you know, do a lot of things on that. So, um, June, it's been great having you on the show. We'll have to continue to do this. I think, uh, I think Parks and Recreation Month, you know, comes around, you know, once a year mm -hmm. and, um, and really, uh, really enjoyed having you on here. Um, appreciate uh, appreciate all you doing i know all those staff you know you reached out to them but i think i think you know talking to you so much more we could talk about and um and, and you know you, even you mentioned to me you wanted to do all stars all these things that you know uh even you know we can talk up we can talk for the next 20 minutes on you just you just got a big dream don't you yes i really i do well great I see. Uh, I see. Philip is jumping back in. Paul is jumping back in. I'm feeling the energy, Jim. I'm feeling it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you, Philip. Just just listening to June talks, it, it, it wears you out, don't it? Wears out, don't it? I think I think I think it was an echo on you there. On you there. I mean, Philip. I mean, Philip. Um, Sorry about that. Yes. Yeah, see. Yeah. So, Paul, appreciate you participating. Uh, you know, you and June work hand in hand, I think, right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they make me now. I'm joking, June. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Hey June, hey, June, I got a, a big shout out real quick. Um, we have a lot of things for different uh, seasons, and I have a full house here, and it's been mentioned to me before that we need a, a, a first night, a, a winter themed uh, New Year's Eve type situation. So just want to well, put that out there. Well, listen, I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there real quick. We are going to have a tree lighting this year. Okay, good. So we, we are doing tree lighting, and we're looking at doing some fake snow. It's going to be great. It's going to be at uh, Redford Place Park. We've already got the 14-foot tree to set up. So big things are coming here in Rosa. Awesome. Very good. See yeah. that, Paul? I was reading your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that, that is a good thought, though, first night type thing for sure. Um, and maybe, you know, we got Bicentennial. It's not named Bicentennial at 250 years. What do you call it, Paul? You know, 250 oh. years. Semi <laughs> I should call, know that. Semi 200, 250th. Yeah, yeah 250. <laughs> you know, it comes up in 2026. So, you know, we got some time there, June, to think about some stuff. So, okay. Well, y'all, y'all do a great job. Both of y'all work good together. Y'all do a great job. Appreciate having y'all on the show. Um, really do. Um, thank, thanks a lot. Uh, any closing comments from you, Philip? No, good to go. Uh, you know, talking about bringing in some uh, snow. I remember, uh, no matter how hot it gets here, there's always available fake snow. Uh, I was in a uh, South Asian, southeastern Asian country, uh, Singapore, for a little while, and it never gets below seventy degrees there, and mostly it's eighty-five degrees. And uh, you know, snow. Every single shopping center had a Santa's uh, workshop with snow, and it was bubbles. I got some great pictures of my kids just being swamped in the bubbles. So I don't know what kind of snow you're bringing in, but you know, bubbles are fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't we don't know if it's in December. It could be real slow snow. Could be real snow. Yes, <laughs> real snow. <laughs> could save some money on the uh, on the fake snow. Definitely. But, no. Exciting, uh, exciting, exciting month uh, going on right now in July. You, you know, a lot of people traveling, a lot of people on vacation. Hope everybody stays safe. But there's still a lot of stuff happening here at home, and uh, lots of activities. Glad, glad, glad to hear of all of it. Yeah, it is. And again, thank you guys for, you guys. for joining tonight. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, good, good, uh, good service you guys provide to the community as we talked about. So thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, then uh, if nothing else, we can close out the show, Ronnie, if you're good yeah. to go. Yeah, I think, I think it's that time. So thank you. Appreciate thank you. it. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We'll catch you in a month.